We are live, supposedly. We'll see. Um, I don't know if anybody can hear me. I think uh, audio levels look okay on my end, um, but I just can't tell. Uh, so anyway, uh, we'll just wait for everybody to join. I know I didn't really put this up with a lot of warning. I did mention that I would be doing a live stream, of course, to thank everybody uh, this weekend. However, um, they get, if, if I really schedule them ahead of time, this is a good problem to have, but I will end up with like 6,000 people in the live stream and I can't keep up with any of the comp. Basically, I don't see any of them. They just scroll. So I like, I like a smaller live stream. So I'm just uh, sitting here with garbage, beautiful wife. Um, and of course, she doesn't want to be on camera. Yeah, so we we know that. I'm here. But she's here. She exists. Uh, she says hi to you. And I'm just going to start this off. Uh, thank you, everybody. Um, it's uh, I got the million, the coolest million people in the world are on this channel right here. Um, that calls for one thing. Modestly priced bubbly. Uh, it's going to... Uh, See, actually, Oyster Bay. I like Oyster Bay, so that's uh, we aren't gonna go right for the Dom Perignon. Like, come on, that's not not Steve style, is it? Anyhow, okay. So, um, thank you, everybody. Uh, I am without these million people. Uh, or actually, like without without, I guess the. 10,000 I started with uh, when things got um, <laughs> when things got uh, uh, popular. Um, I would just be a furniture repairman. Uh, so the only thing, all right, let's see. This beautiful wife crawling along the floor trying to stay out of the frame. And I got to turn my phone on to silent. I should have done that already because I've always got people that try to call me during a live stream because I think it's funny. So, supposedly, the more violently the cork erupts out of the bottle, the worse quality it is. So, let's uh, see what happens here. Okay, I think I lost the damage deposit there. Uh, <laughs> that tastes, well, it, I'm sure it'll taste. I'm sure it'll taste garbage. good. Oh, garbage. Can't uh, get enough of that. Okay, so, let's... Uh, Pour ourselves a little bit of champagne. Please, uh, everybody at home, crack your own champagne uh, if you have it available to you. See, a sensible sized glass. You don't, uh, with champagne, you don't brim the glasses. Uh, you got to be sophisticated with it. All right, all right. So I'm going to dig into these comments here or see what I can, what I can hit as far as comments here. I plan to stay on for, I don't know. We'll see how things go. We'll see how boring things get. Holy moly. Uh, 3,500, 3,600. Woo. Okay, well, cheers. Cheers, everybody. Mm. Delicious. Okay, there's a beautiful wife is trying to remain off the camera, but she's pulling up her, her computer. Swear, I swear she exists. I swear she exists. So, I'm right here. She exists, so does garbage. Hey, garbage, come over here. Hey, garbage. Okay, so garbage wants to say hi to everybody. Um, he doesn't know how computers work. Anyways, this is garbage. Um, he's a fine, legs. fine specimen. I think he's he's too long to have just four legs. A couple in the middle would even things out a little bit. So, a little bit. Mm. all right. So, beautiful wife is. Uh, you're gonna have to turn the volume um, off. Okay. Right on. So we got garbage the cat. We got um, four thousand awesome people here, and some champagne. Uh, let's. Um, I, I'm gonna have to keep bringing this up throughout. Thank you, everybody, um, for letting me do this for. Um, for a job, for life, uh, for a, a lifestyle. It is, um, I don't know what to say, uh, other than thank you guys for subscribing. Um, 
I like to try and keep um, try to keep things original as much as possible. I know eventually every channel gets stale, and you know you you're doing what works, and it can, it keeps working until it doesn't anymore. You know, even Breaking Bad had to end after a certain number of seasons. But I think we're still in the heyday for an, another few years at least. Uh, I sure hope so. So let's see. I am going to see if I can um, dig into either a question. Oh, here's one. Um, am I getting the gold plaque? Well, um, I qualify for it, but I haven't got a notification yet. YouTube basically uh, puts up a banner at the top. It says, congratulations you get an award and then you tell them where to send it. And uh, so I, I did a little research into that. You're not even allowed to sell these things. Like it's, if you sell one of those awards or put it like on eBay or something, they can like demonetize your channel. They can get rid of your channel completely. Um, so that's, uh, that was just one of the neat facts I learned about it. So as soon as, uh, as soon as that thing shows up, it's, we're going to take camping, right? We don't have uh we don't have any options. So uh, let's see. I'm hitting the road here um, tomorrow to film that um, video where we're going to do. Uh, it was a fun camping trip. Uh, it's the place I'm camping for this kind of a risky one. This is the one that's uh, supposed to be the million subscriber thing. Uh, so it's, I didn't want to put it up before I had a million subscribers because that's a little presumptuous. Uh, but this one, there's a beautifully risky location, um, the likes of which I've never camped. Uh, and it is kind of within a campground. So um, I showed up there and we're like, I'm getting ready to camp. Uh, I had the a tent set up and all that at the main campground. And then I'm going to wander off to go camp somewhere uh, that's in walking distance. But that's when um, there were, you know, reports of bears in the area. There's signs. Other people at the campground had said that there's bears. Um, so being alone, no cell service, uh, my bear phobia, things did not align well. So I just, um, instead of going to camp where I was going to camp, went back to the campsite and had a regular normal camping night, but every sound in the woods scared me. Uh, I probably picked the wrong, uh, the wrong pastime here as far as camping. So I'm going to be going back with crazy neighbor because then we'll have two of us and it will be a really good, um, like I can run. Actually, I think he can probably run faster than me. So I got a bad hip. One of us will go down. It'll probably be me, but two people with bear spray, two people with bear bangers, going to have walkie talkies, somebody else at the campsite. Um, because that's another thing is that I, I don't think I would get arrested doing this, but, uh, you, you don't want to that would always be uh always be trouble so thank you um yeah i think the bear phobia who said we're all bear phobic i think we're all a little um bear phobic because uh yeah um they're insanely dangerous uh and i just watched too much grizzly man too too much of all that when i was like I did a, a bicycle trip from Victoria to Edmonton. And when I was, mm, it was about 10 years ago, I was around 30. And I had no fear of bears the whole way. Um, I biked past them. I slept on the side of the woods or the side of the highway in the woods, all that to like stealth camp the whole way. And I don't know. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, Kimmy Kimmy says, make the slow mode a little bit, um, a bit more slow mode. Let's see if I can do that. I don't know if I actually can adjust the settings once things have begun streaming. I have the, the slow mode is set up right now and it doesn't look like it's set up on slow mode, but it's, uh, it's at one message every 60 seconds. So the slow mode will only let somebody message once a minute. So that people don't just spam the the, the chat thing. So, um, it I can't actually slow down how fast they scroll. That's that's up to you guys. <laughs> but uh, so again, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody. Okay, here's one I wanted to get to: railway. 
Um, we are focusing right now on the river trip uh, or preparing for the river trip. And that's going to be happening. It was supposed to be happening quite shortly here. However, um, I got to go back out and film that um, risky one. So uh, once that's done, I got a couple of other plans that are going to be right around the acreage. So I'll be in a school bus if the thing is still insured. I've got, uh, <laughs> I don't know what the insurance, what's going to happen because that uh, insurance on the bus is coming out of an old bank account that I never used for anything. And it ran out of money. So then it missed a payment and I haven't had time to contact them yet to square up. So the bus will probably be parked in the yard for this video, but that's okay. That will work. Uh, and then we're going to work on the railroad. So before we get uh, even on the river, we're going to do the railway. So this, there's going to be a stealth camp, the next one coming up. Then after that, um, it'll be a couple at the acreage and then the river trip. So that's kind of the way the, um, kind of the way things are going. So let me see. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Um, that documentary crew that came out, um, there, there's going to be, I think, a lot of questions, like questions and answers, uh, all done in that. Like they interviewed me for uh, a bunch of days straight. So um, all those usual questions like next scar, that was surgery. Um, this, whichever side it's on, this scar, falling down a cliff, probably gave me the fear of heights. Um, let's see, why is my neck so big? I don't know, uh, just the way God made me. So, okay, now here's one, like, I would love to wish everybody happy birthdays that are having birthdays. So I know out of a million people, my math isn't good, but there's thousands that are probably having their birthday today, just statistically. So Andrew Kennedy um, would really appreciate it if I could wish your girlfriend a happy birthday. She loves the channel. Sadly, I don't have her name there. The comment, I just have Andrew, Andrew Kennedy's girlfriend, happy birthday. Um, and we'll see if I can actually see what the name is, if it pops up again. Anyways, I have no plan for this live stream. I never do. So we're just kind of going with the flow, seeing what happens, drinking a little champagne. And, um, I have to say, of course, thank you for everybody. Uh, and yeah, I do actually have some beer as well, not just champagne, because uh, we're going to get the party started. But uh, <laughs> the the last, I, I was live streaming when I'd hit 100,000 subscribers. And that was so mind blowing. Um, it, and it's impossible to try and time that because I guess you start to get closer to a milestone and then it speeds up because everybody it's like 99,000. Are they going to be the hundred thousand? But it, it was so mind blowing and it is still so mind blowing. Um, I'm at a million subscribers now and I still feel like a very small channel or a relatively small channel. And I know that's not, exactly the case anymore because there's a million so thank you everybody but also thanks to the team um it's not just me we've got beautiful wife of course who was helping with the videos we've got abby we've got my sister we got bill mcneil uh, helping all the moderators uh there's um a facebook uh fan group that has popped up and i stick my head in there sometimes and say hello and uh i like to you know try to stay in as much in touch with uh, with the community as possible because uh, those are those are avenues I can actually answer a lot of questions on, um, and the memes are hilarious. So I have to thank everybody there, and uh, you know we got crazy neighbor Captain John. Um, anybody who's made little guest appearances here and there, you know I have my sister working uh, helping with uh, tracking down um, you know new interesting products and and getting those links up for the Amazon store thing. But uh, so I guess I just get to sit here and thank people all afternoon and then um, answer a comment or, or two here when people uh, 
send a question. So, um, yeah, we're just kind of just sitting here having uh, some Oyster Bay bubbly. And uh, the Oyster Bay, we really like their um, uh, Sauve Blanc. It's got like almost a grapefruity taste. I don't always just drink cheap beer. Sometimes we try to be sophisticated. Um, if you see anything pop up, uh, I'm just okay. My beautiful wife's uh, trying to look at some of those comments and questions. Hi, everyone. She says, hi, everyone. Uh, let's see. Oh, somebody's asking for a Mav link up. Um, I talked with Mav, uh, and we, he was going to be coming through the area. Like, he was in Canada. I was going to go meet him. But the problem is, like, YouTubers are notoriously, like, solo people. And, like, our subscriber bases are so different between channels that people will not like a certain YouTuber, but they'll like a different one. And it's like, do I really want to put, like, and I know Mav, I have no problem with Mav. Mav's awesome. I think what he's doing is very fun. But we do have very different styles as well. So uh, to find, I think, the Foresty Forest is, like, the only one that I've ever met up with uh to do like a collaboration or anything like that and that's you know he is absolutely the most non-controversial youtuber like far less controversial than me so that was like easy of course i'm gonna do one with forest deforest but um the geographical distances between subscribers in various countries i don't even know how it works if i want to go into the us to film a video like if i need a work visa or something to be filming a youtube video so um, let's see. Do you see me in Hinton? Hinton, there are, um, a ton of trails. Do you see me has said, and, um, that would be great for stealth camping without incident. Uh, Hinton's one of my favorite spots to go. Um, it is, it is great. Uh, but I don't want too good of a stealth spot. Like I could easily find a spot in the middle of nowhere that I probably shouldn't be. I could probably live the rest of my life there and be undetected. Um, but that's not that exciting, right? Like, and I don't mean just as an entertainment standpoint. I mean, like for my own personal, uh, my own personal, oh, we don't need garbage. Doesn't want to be on. He's, he doesn't. <laughs> Right, garbage. Yeah. yeah, you need a stealth spot that's uh, the perfect, the perfect amount good and the perfect amount kind of risky. So it's you want a medium good stealth spot. That's what makes things fun. Um, there we go. Uh, me and <clears throat> me and Joe Lawrence should do a camping video. Amanda has said, uh, and I think that's a possibility. Because uh, Joe Lawrence, for those that don't know, wrote uh, a few songs for the channel. And he was my instructor when I was going to the gas fitting school for eight weeks in the winter. And he was the, the fellow that hooked me up with all the wood scraps from the wood shop of the guys doing carpentry to help me stay warm. Because the cost of uh, firewood was um, formidable. And uh, yeah, it's I'm not really that controversial. A lot of people like... <laughs> I'm not, I'm not one of those stoic macho channels of, you know, where I come across as an expert on anything. Um, I just do like my normal camping. Some people don't appreciate that. Some people want to learn um, like serious outdoor skills <laughs> from their videos or from what they watch. And that's not the route that I've taken because um, eventually like there's, you run out of things to learn and you know, I don't know anybody in real life that goes camping uh, and uses a bow drill or anything like that. Like we, you know, you crumple up a bunch of paper, throw some gas on it. You light the fire that way. That's all people that I know go camping. But uh, let's see. Cheers, everyone. No. Let's see. Um, let's see. 
here, Jake is asked, Jake Frey has asked, uh, what does your wife think of your stealth camping? <laughs> I'm okay with it. it she, brings some joy. She's okay with it. Uh, it brings me joy. It's, you know, it spices up the camping, right? Because, you know, like if you're not hiding and <laughs> cowering in fear, how is how's that fun, right? Mm. I love watching him, like, just, I love watching him bring joy to people. Uh, there we go. Um, a to Z mobile auto repair. I certainly would consider a cookbook. Um, I don't know if people would actually want to um, eat anything that I've, like, there's a few good recipes. A lot of it is really processed junk food that comes in a can or a box with a picture on it and instructions. So that's like, I'm just combining stuff out of the pantry aisle at the grocery store um, in various different ways. But I do have somebody that is kind of going through trying to organize the, uh, organize the recipes into little lists and that, that type of stuff. So I'm um, hoping to have that out before Christmas, but uh it all comes down to, you know, it could even be like something that you would give as a joke to somebody that eats really healthy. Um, say like, here, it's a campfire cooking book. And, you know, every every ingredient is like can of uh, can of gravy, can of this. Uh, so. Uh, there's, there's just a, a random question. Jay Spike uh, is asked, how much coffee do I consume on a daily basis? Um, in the summertime, four. I, well, maybe four coffees, uh, you yeah, know, bare minimum too. Uh, but I get those big iced coffees, uh, that, that are, um, nice and cold and refreshing on a day like today. We've got this, this weather here. I don't know what this equates to. Let me just, let's see. Mm. All right. So basically the weather now in Fahrenheit, it's like 30, around 30 Celsius. So that's in the mid to high 80s Fahrenheit. And it does get hotter than that here too, but this is at the point where I'm a little uncomfortable. So I think on these, uh, these little videos here, we've got the two I'm going to do at the acreage, but yeah, stealth camping in this weather. Ooh, that's that ain't fun. That's not very fun um, in the heat like this. So that's why we drinking all these iced coffees. Um, how many beers per week? I probably drink a case of beer a week, um, mostly on the video. And then I try to um, trying to stay relatively um, trying to increase my healthiness factor. So. Um, I've been making more conscious decisions. I've, I've uh, gained some weight over the years. You know, I probably am about 20 pounds overweight. I want to lose that. You're still handsome. People are using this. I'm still handsome. Well, thank you. Um, but now if I shed those 20 pounds, it's like over the last six months, like I haven't gained any weight over the last six months. I got a scale. I'm not increasing. So all I have to do is like drop those 20 pounds and I can maintain what I'm doing now and I shouldn't be spiraling out of control. So I will do my small changes, lose, you know, a pound or two a month. How's garbage the cat? Paul asks. Um, he's pretty good. Uh, I've got no complaints about garbage. He is um, somewhat dog-like of a cat. It's uh, he doesn't... He doesn't meow. Um, he makes little noises, but never meows. Uh, he's, a, he's a high quality cat. Um, okay, let's see. You know, these are, I just like to answer nice and easy questions. Ooh, that Mike 
Nestor has asked if I ever set up a bear tripwire with bells. No, but that's a pretty good idea. Except for the fact a squirrel is going to set that off or something. And I'm going to spend the whole night terrified that there's a bear out there when it's actually something little and cute that's tripping the, tripping the wire with bells. Um, but I do have this um, from the gas fitting world. I've got this thermal camera um, and it's what we'd use for in the gas fitting world to, you know, look for air leaks around windows and stuff. And that I can shine into the woods and I can see if there's an animal out there. Um, it'll, it'll show me the shape of it and everything. So that might work with the bells or a motion detector. I've seen, I've seen those. They're like little, and th that would scare you as well. Middle of the night sitting there and then the motion detector sees something in the woods and turns on a light that would, ugh. oh, there we go. Greeny from Australia. Uh, more steaks, less canned food. I like that. Um, I like that concept. And I think I've avoided steak on my videos for basically, I think I've done two or three times have I cooked a steak on over the last three years. Um, the reason for that was when I was going to school, um, living in the tent, there was like, I, I did a steak one night, like right on the coals, I believe. And one of the comments says, what is it with these guys and steaks all the time? And I was like, oh, and I looked at some of the other like outdoors channels and everybody's cooking a steak. And I said, you know, good point. Um, I don't want to be just another guy cooking steak on a rock or something. I want to like, let's be a little more creative. Um, but I can be creative with the side dishes. And then that gives me an excuse to eat more steak. Um, Cause I've done, I've done one where it's, it's like, I call it the payday meal. It's like, you taken, you got, I had uh craft mac and cheese and a steak. So it's like one bite is like the day before payday, one bite is the day on payday. And just the, the combination of the two I thought was pretty funny. So for those who have joined in um, and have not heard yet, uh, we got a million subs. Uh, so thank you everybody who has subscribed. Um, Here's, here's one that um, Janet has asked, a Joe Rogan collaboration. Um, we had talked years ago um, about that, and it's nothing's impossible, but it, it's the geographical distance. Um, that's, you know, several, several days of actually driving. I'm scared to fly. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm pretty much... Uh, um, I pretty much open if, if, if a YouTuber floats through my area, um, that that's great. We can, we can meet up, but I've, I also don't really know how to do a collaboration. Like I did, uh, with foresty forest, we just kind of met up it, like I filmed a video and he filmed a video and basically our videos of what we were doing just kind of intersected and we met each other and I don't know how they normally work. And I think it would be, I don't know. It'd be weird. Um, it would be weird, but eh, maybe maybe we'll get some collabs done. Why not? Um, somebody's asked, how do I buy a hunker down shirt? Please don't right now. Um, I'm trying to, I, I got quality issues with the main company. And then there's a new company that I've been trying out and we've got shipping cost issues. So there's a third company I'm looking at, uh, which should hopefully solve these problems. Um, so hold on, hold tight. There should be a new store within the next couple of weeks here before, before the fall for sure, before September. And then, uh, we'll, we'll test out the quality. Like I want there to be good value. And I know all of these print on demand t-shirt companies, uh, that link with the merch shelf. It's just, it's expensive. It's expensive to get them shipped. Um, sometimes they get held up. you got to pay like import duties and, you know, they don't actually pay that much to a creator. So it's like, you know, I was trying those beer koozies and I think, you know, I ordered one of them and it was like $20 to get a beer koozie to me. And I know my commission on that is $1. So <laughs> I was like, no, we're, we're going to shut that all down. We got to figure out something better because those beer koozies, 
you can get them made for like 10 cents. And if I got to go down and physically stuff them in mailboxes myself, um, we can do better than 20 bucks. So hold, hang tight on that merch. Um, and we'll, we'll do what we can. Let's see. I'm just trying to find a, a pretty good, um, pretty good question. Um, here's, here's one from Mike, um, asked if beautiful wife will ever join for a stealth camp and will nope, <laughs> nope, 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 nope. That's not her thing. Uh, she is not actually, she's not even that comfortable dropping me off to be going stealth camping or picking me up. I could do that, but no, thank you. So she's, uh, yeah. And will I ever go to Saskatchewan? Actually? Yeah. We, we were in Saskatchewan last year. Um, we were, uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Sorry. I just got a message here. I'm going to check out here. Okay. There we go. It's just, uh, was an answer regarding some other thing here. So yeah, we were in Saskatchewan last year and I started filming a video. That was like an abandoned video. We got orphaned. Um, it just wasn't working. Uh, I was there with beautiful wife. We were exploring around a campground. We were actually in Cypress Hill, uh, Cypress Hills provincial park. So it's, it, yeah, that's a real, <laughs> a real park name and, uh, a really cool spot. We were filming in there and, uh, it just never made the cut. It, it wasn't a good enough video. And I, we, we left it at that. Um, my love, thank you for bringing me peace. Mm -hmm. I love you to the second star to the right and right on to my right. <laughs> just a moment here. Okay. Just making sure. Yes, Cypress, Cypress is, uh, yeah, it's an actual park, but it is, uh, yeah, we used to listen to that all the time. Uh, I did grow up, I grew up going to high school in the late 90s. It's like every single CD was rap in my car. So, um, Paul, a deleted scenes video would be fantastic. Um, I really want to do that. Uh, but there aren't many deleted scenes. Most of them aren't that interesting. Um, it would be boring to be honest it's deleted scenes are like when i get tongue-tied and i do the shot again but if anything falls breaks catches on fire that goes in the video um absolutely uh there's like deleted scenes and videos like that would generally be something that didn't go right or you know here's here's a little behind the scenes knowledge of something that did not go right when i camped under the bridge i filmed that video twice the first time the camera fell over in the middle of the night and you know, I'd been dropped off there. So it's, I got a camp for the night. I can't just call it quits. So camera falls over the lens breaks and I got to drive into town the next day, buy a new lens. And like, this is, we were in a fairly remote area. So I had to drive quite a distance to get a new lens. And then I had to drive back out and camp again the next night. And basically, the two videos were pretty similar, but I, I had to film it twice, um, unfortunately. So it's, I've changed my cameras to, uh, Just, I'm sorry. um, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's see. What else do we got here? Um, let's see. White Rock, BC. I'm headed back out to BC. Um, just let everybody know. Uh, right after the river trip. I'm going to get the river trip done and back out to the coast because, like, yeah, like, I couldn't, I couldn't believe when I was out there just the amount of, amount, amount of stuff uh, that there is to film. You know, you got abandoned plane crashes up in hills and stuff and, like, there's just so much neat stuff. A lot of abandoned stuff. That's what I, I love about BC is I think a lot of the terrain is too challenging. So if something goes and crashes somewhere in the woods or if something is, you know, decommissioned, it just sits there. Uh, nobody's going to, you know, haul it out of there off the side of a mountain. So there's, um, that's good stuff. Good stuff. Um, 
Ah, here's one because this is fun. Uh, one coding has asked, "Am I going to do more of those disguise tutorials?" Um, eh, oh yeah. Um, I don't want to give away too many. I have a couple of other disguises. There's only so far I can go with that, but I do like kind of generally disguising myself a little bit, um, unless I'm getting dropped off like right where I'm camping. Uh, a disguise is good because um, there's been an, I think three or four times that I'm on the way out to film a stealth camping video and somebody will recognize that they've watched my channel and they're, they're I'm there with a backpack walking down some trail in their neighborhood so they know what's up. But it's going to be just a matter of time until somebody is recognizes me and not because they're a fan. It's They'll recognize me because they don't like what I'm doing. And then I'll be done for. And they probably won't say anything to me. They may just get on the horn and say, hey, 911, we got a stealth camper. I don't know. So more more costumes for sure. That's uh, that's always fun. I'll just get like a generic costume to kind of not be like there's nothing there's nothing stealthy about walking down the road being Steve Wallace with a big shirt that says hunker down on it. It's uh, really sticks out uh, to to the people that know. If you know, you know. And let me see. Do, 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 do. I, I I wish I could answer all it, like every single question, but um, uh, of course I can't. So let's see. Oh yeah, there's cross Canada tour. Um, Sergeant So has, has asked cross Canada tour. There is a large possibility that that is going to happen. Um, I don't want to do it in the winter because, you know, the winter's horrible. Uh, if there's time in the fall, perhaps, and otherwise the spring, probably. So there is, let me see. Okay. Can't get a question in. This is from CM Calgary. I just got a, a message. I guess the, there's too many uh there's too many uh, things going on the chat. So it's, um, if you want to ask, just uh, you can shoot me. For those who don't know, in Calgary, there's a, a local blog um, channel thing, and that's uh, known as CM Calgary. And uh, I get along with them quite nicely. So, okay, somebody's asking, and I'll, I'll answer this one. Uh, Crazy Neighbors actually at a memorial right now. So um, tomorrow he'll be leaving with me on the trip, but he had he did have to go to a service today. It was out of town. So um, it was a family friend of his that uh, had passed away earlier in the year, and they're they're doing the celebration of life right now. So I, I would have loved to have him on the the live stream with me. However, this weekend did not work for him um, at all. And <laughs> I do an airport stealth camp with campfire. It's I'm I'm always thinking about the dumbest spots and like I'll see something that I know I'd never possibly do because it's either way too illegal or way too risky. But uh, the Edmonton International Airport, I'd done one there with uh, in the parking lot. That was like way back when I first started to do stealth camping videos. And beautiful wife had said, like I was out of ideas. Like that's <laughs> I was out of ideas. Like three years ago, almost three years ago, I was out of ideas and I've still kept it going for three years. But I remember it was, the sun was down already. And I said, I don't know what I'm going to film today. And she said, what about a stealth camping in a parking lot? And then I said, Oh yeah. Edmonton international airport parking lot and the visitors, uh, or the long-term parking. So, um, but anyway, I get off on a tangent like that all the time underneath of that airport. There is, um, there was a culvert that goes under the entire runway uh, of that airport. <laughs> it's like the main landing runway. Now, there is no possible way I'm getting past security to camp underneath of the main runway. At And if I did, that's like no fly list territory. Uh, so I'm not going to do that one. I know, I know kind of my limits. Um, and yes, unfortunately, under the... Uh, 
underneath of the runway of the airport. Uh, but I would love to. There's there's so many things that um, so many things that would be fun if they weren't so illegal. Um, the uh, when I was um, I lost my train of thought, guys. <laughs> I love abandoned, abandoned buildings, ghost towns, that type of thing. Those are about the best thing that I can imagine, except they're pretty much owned by somebody. Like they're actually, some of them get like reabsorbed back into county land or whatever, you know, the, the town gets abandoned. Nobody pays the bills. There's one in BC. People keep sending me this, uh, this article about, and it's this whole town and the power's still on. Um, there's shopping malls and everything. There's bars, there's hotels, there's like houses, uh, probably like it, it got abandoned in like 83 or something. So it's like a time capsule of eighties. It's, it's quite impressive from the pictures. I'd love to do that one. And uh, it, it's just so neat. There's probably like a million tons of asbestos in that town, but that's okay. Let's see. Mike is off. Audio is off. Is that a problem? James has said, Mike is off. Audio off. If that's the case, um, I've been sitting here for quite a while. Um, how's the sound? Does the sound okay? No, it's not. No, no. Okay, so people can hear me. I think might be uh, might be an issue on, uh, on your end there on the computer. Maybe it's... Uh, could be anything. Anyway, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, that abandoned town. So there is nobody lives there. I think there's like a caretaker. Somebody had bought the uh, bought the town, um, and they're trying to figure out what to do with it. So I might talk to them. I try not to like hint about what I plan to do about specific spots in the future. Um, let's see. I got a question from CM Calgary who's asked, do you think you could record three stealth camping videos at the same time? I have enough trouble recording one at a time, uh, three at a, at a time. I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> it's, I got my limits. I've, I've only got, I guess I have a few cameras now. Uh, so we've got, got that all. Okay. The railway. Cause I've seen that pop up a few times and I know that, uh, People are people come and go from a live stream. Nobody just sits here for the whole hour. Um, you know, some people do, but uh, so for the railway questions, um, as soon as we film this next one, that's our risky super adventure one. Once that one's done, it's railway time, uh, because it's going to be uncomfortably hot here, and I don't want to be like with the railway one. That way, you know, we're at the acreage, I go cool down in the house if it's too hot I, i'm not hiding on the side of the road with no breeze sweating like yeah so uh, no why don't i wear shorts because it's like my legs are like never seen sunlight so it's at the point where it's just way too like like white as a piece of paper like my legs i can't um display that uh, <laughs> yes and Derek down said again with the airports are a big no um, and that's also with um, this is uh, I'll let you in on this secret speaking of railways and why I'm building this one I'm basically giving up on the the idea uh, because this this was like one of the the brilliant ideas that I wanted to do so desperately except I've pretty much given up on the concept. I cannot find a section of abandoned railway that is actually technically legally abandoned. Um, my concept was that I would build something that fits on the tracks and with a motor and scoot down and like just basically a launcher with wheels. They get somewhere where I'm going, pull it off. I even bought the wheels that fit on the actual train tracks through for like a model mining cart. So that's why I own those. I was going to stick it on the tracks, uh, you know, 
go down. I like I, I looked at a few abandoned railways, but they're still owned by a foundation or by a company. And until the track actually comes out of there, um, it's it's a federal crime to be trespassing on that railway. And I don't want to get banned from going to the U.S. from some stupid uh, uh, charge for making a video on a railway track. If I was a smaller channel, I would try it. And so that idea, I'll pass the torch to somebody. I'd love to see that video, uh, but I just can't film it without getting in some severe trouble. Uh, and I even, I've been discussing with like short, uh, short line rail companies and anybody that may have a, a section of track that I would use or a little spur. Uh, so I gave up on that idea and I'm just building my own railway now. <laughs> so that's, that's why I started to build the railway is because, um, you know, I got people that were sending off emails to like CN, CP, all the big Canadian rail companies and the responses that they were getting back were not friendly and pretty much threatening. Uh, so uh, I'm just going to not do that. Uh, okay, so Rebellion Off-Road. How's the electric bike? Well, we see it again. Uh, I'll be messing around with that when we are back out there with the... Um, when we're back out there with the doing the railway thing because I had to take those batteries and put them in the bus. So uh, right now in the bus, it's the solars on it and it's running like a little fridge in there. And I'm just doing tests on that to see how long we can keep the, the thing running like into the fall. Cause right now only half the solar panels hooked up. It's running that fridge. No problem. Uh, it stayed perfectly, uh, perfectly cold for the last month, pretty much. So let's, see beer break everybody take a take a beer break if you have to hit the washroom you can do that now i'll just uh i'll scroll through well you know 30 seconds a minute or something uh go and do what you need to do and i'll dig up uh uh i'll dig up um a really a really cool question or comment um Let me see. Now, somebody asked, well, we'll just wait for the folks to come back uh, before we start answering any more questions. So, yeah, how's the weather you guys are? It's hot here. We got this, um, we're always in a state of adjusting to weather because we're, we're going from like, like in Fahrenheit we have minus 40 degree days in Fahrenheit. And then we have plus like well into over a hundred degree days. Like, so we've got that kind of a, a range where by the time we're kind of getting used to the summer, it's like, oh yeah, by the way, you guys don't get a fall either. You're going to go straight from like 30 degree days that is going to snow the next week. And then you're going to be down into minus 40, but that's a bit of an exaggeration, but, uh, so I hope you guys are enjoying um, 92 degrees in South Northern Nevada. Oh, that's what's that in normal temperature? <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, so normal temperature it in Celsius. I just I know that most of the, the viewers are coming from the States, so I have to kind of do these conversions on the fly and the people that are Canadian they already kind of know what our temperature are, but for those who aren't, uh, th those who are Celsius, but not in Canada. Um, yeah, we're having minus forties in the winter and we could have plus forties in the summer. So that's like in Celsius terms, it's like about an 80 degree temperature differential. So if you could, that would take room temperature water to boiling basically. Anyways, um, Oh, Phil, any answers to the roof rack issue you have on the car? The car didn't come with the mounting points for a roof rack, which I kind of really wanted. Um, there are answers, but I need to be sure that uh, people can do aftermarket roof racks and stuff. But I don't want it to leak because I know what's going to happen. Everybody's going to say, nope, not my problem. You know, the car dealership, nope. 
um, it's been modified. This company would say that, that I don't know. They may find a way to. Uh, uh, they may find a way to do. Uh, let's see. Um, okay. Hi, Paul Messner, uh, UK viewer. Thank you for uh, thank you for the uh, the kind words. There's um, people really had to learn what stealth camping was when I first started doing it, and I didn't even know what it was really. I knew what it was, but uh, the hate that I got after the first stealth camping video was just unreal. Like I remember thinking, well, I better not do that again because people are, you know, like, they were really, really mean. <laughs> and I get comments now from people that have subscribed for a while. They say, yeah, when I saw the first stealth camping video, um, I really didn't like it. I didn't know what to think. But for some reason, I kept watching it. And now they kind of just subscribe. They've followed along. Um, let's see. You and sorry, I'm just uh, scrolling through. Um, uh, no, no, Kemi, Kemi is asked, do I want to get more famous? That's no, uh, <laughs> I like to, uh, I, I don't consider myself famous. I wake up, I'm still, I'm the furniture repair guy from like three years ago and I'm 40 years old. You don't, it takes some getting used to, to have a million subscribers. I will say, um, even a hundred thousand subscribers. It was like, I wake up. This is like surreal. Um, I literally was fixing furnaces, uh, <laughs> three years ago. Um, actually even more recently, um, I, I had my own, the furnace repair company for quite a while and I was self-employed. I'd go out and repair people's furnaces, but, um, yeah. 40. Yeah, I'm 40. So old dog, new tricks. Um, I'm not going to start a TikTok. Uh, it's that's, I don't know. I would, it's took so much time to learn like Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter. I don't need more platforms. Um, somebody was joking that, uh, I could do like an only fans, except it would be like just fans, like, you know, like <laughs> just normal camping stuff, except put it on OnlyFans. I thought that would be funny. But um, let's see. Okay, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you to everybody who has joined into the chat. Um, thank you for the million subscribers. Um, it's, oh, here's one. It's all in caps. So I could actually see this. I'm not encouraging everybody to type everything all in caps, but uh, have I ever considered stealth camping in a large city such as Toronto? Large cities scare me. Um, they normally have, um, there's a normally an established homelessness problem and it's coming to join the party as somebody with carrying around, you know, like a bunch of cameras and stuff and tripods. Um, I don't want to camp. I don't want to camp in a place where there is actually a, where there's actually um, a homeless problem because I don't want to huh, minimize what people are going through or whatever. I don't want to show up with like nice gear and like go camping in some downtown place with a bunch of homeless people because um, it, it'll be like me like appropriating their homelessness or I don't know. Um, I think it would be. I don't think I would do it. Um, possibly, but. I don't know. I like those towns that are like a few thousand people. Those towns are like, they seem to have a bunch of good spots. There's none of that anti-homelessness architecture where people have, uh, you know, got spikes under bridges and stuff. So you can't lay down. Um, it's th those are the perfect ones. They they're not used to like vagrants or anything living in town. So those, those size cities are cities and towns are really nice. Um, just 
less than two less than twenty thousand people, I say is the the sweet spot. Let me see. Oh, I have to say, hi, Sheila. <laughs> Sheila's wondering if I even have pants on. Only one way to find out. Yes, I got jeans on, of course. Um, I guess, like, I'm, I'm not that lazy. I would at least put on pants to do a live stream. Um, let's see. This is like... Uh, Uno momento, guys. Just... Uh, hmm. See, some of these comments are just silly. Of course I'm wearing underwear. Um... Uh, thanks, thanks to everybody that's uh, that's uh, that's shoot me messages. I wish I could answer more of these questions. I want to be thoughtful with the, with the ones I can get to here, and not just pick the easy ones. Um, it's with the stealth camping. I will say, um, I get a lot of suggestions for places to stealth camp. And I appreciate that. Um, when I camped in that humongous garbage castle, that was in Lethbridge. Um, and I forget who it was that recommended that spot to me, but I be, I wasn't local, so I had no idea about it. And I literally camped, you know, a few hundred feet away from this humongous sculpture built out of, um, all the debris from a flood. And it's like a multi multi-level thing with like this balcony and everything. And um, I, I wouldn't have known about it unless that, that person had suggested, like, check out Garbage Castle. I'm like, okay, right there, Garbage Castle. I'm I'm going. Uh, that's so up my alley. Um, and I, I, I camped there, but I wouldn't have known it was there 200 feet away unless it was from a comment. But a lot of comments that the conundrum with stealth camping is there's like a gray area of what will make a good stealth um what will make it exciting and also what will make it uh not get me in jail so trespassing that's like i don't trespass it's got to be public land i don't think you know with trespass laws in canada there is a situation where if if there's no fence and there's no sign they can ask you to leave but you know, like if it if it, if it looks like it could be just public land, um, you can't really be charged with it under the petty trespass in Canada, as far as my understanding goes. Um, there, like if you're jumping a fence, yeah, you're you're asking for it. Uh, if there's a no trespassing sign, well, you're definitely asking for it. Uh, but if it just looks like it could be, you know, like there is the onus on the property owner, that's why you see those no trespassing signs all over the place, so that people can actually charge you with trespassing. And they have to be actually a certain distance apart as well. Uh, so I, I do get suggestions all the time that are like stealth camp on the top of a building. Yeah, that's uh, that's full blown trespassing. I'd love to, but the only way you can pull that off is, I guess, with permission. And I do have people that give me permission to do some things like that. They'll say, you know, yeah, would you like to do a camping trip on top of our building? And I don't do those because it's that's how's not that's not stealth camping if I've got permission to do it. So it's it's a tricky a tricky thing where I'm trying to, you know, not be trespassing and not get permission. So that leaves public land, uh, pretty much. So yeah, an another one that people suggest um, quite a bit is like in a camping store overnight. Um, no. I don't know about you, but as far as I know about Cabela's, I don't think they're going to be happy about, like, they sell, um, you know, guns and ammunition and everything. I don't think they're going to be happy about somebody setting up in one of their hunting blinds overnight and secretly camping while the store is empty overnight. So I think I could get away with camping inside of a store if the store was open 24-7 but we don't have any 24 seven camping stores around here and we should, of course, um, I would, uh, I'd be there, uh, morning, noon and night. So, uh, the, those are, 
some of the some of the things behind the scenes of um, behind the scenes of what makes a good stealth camping video. So I do appreciate when people send me suggestions. I try to read them, but if it's a suggestion that's like going to be full on trespassing, it ain't going to happen. Um, if there's if there's a gray area, yeah, it could happen. So thank you to everybody who's congratulating on the million. And uh, got. I love you. I love you. I'm sick. Oh, no, uh, <laughs> no, hold on. Oh, beautiful wife's here. Uh, I just want to thank you. Yes. Well, I want to thank everybody here. Uh, we've been on for like for an hour here. Um, and I think I'm going to have to call it a stream now, guys. Um, Thank you guys all so much. I, I, I try to stream for an hour. That's kind of what I do. So uh, thank you guys all so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, thank hunker you. down, everybody. Um, cheers. Thank you all so much. I. That's all I could say is thank you.